of go through each pot and kind of explain what I think about them or what they could be used for. And we're just going to admire some nice handmade pottery. So I didn't even I didn't even cut open the box. if I just use the scissors. Yeah, I taped it really good. There we go. Okay. gotten creative with this packing materials we got a bunch of old like this is not toilet paper rolls these are like <laughs> these are something else this almost looks like something that you would on a roll with a big sheet of plastic on if you look together interesting packing method so we got a bunch of these little parcels in here looks like we got a couple of big ones smaller ones we can kind of fish them all out uh, that one's nice and big it's another really nice and big one uh, looks like i got the smallest one on the table already these are, uh, you can tell these are starch pe peanuts because they have that smell, so they're biodegradable. Really nice shipping option. Let's see. Take this. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. We'll start with the smallest, and then we'll go up to the biggest one. like any good potter does they always wrap their oh there's a couple of pots in here they always wrap their pots in a lot of plastic and uh, bubble wrap which is good because it's breakable of course ceramics is basically glass minerals that have been fired to a high temperature where they're literally glass and will shatter just as easy Lots and lots of plastic wrap here. So we got two pots. This one's really awesome here. I like this one a lot. Kind of reminds me of cookies and cream or a mint chocolate ice cream almost. Chuck Iker's signature kind of put the way he put these on the bottom here. Nice deep bands. Matte texture, really, really nice. Oh, uh, the Purple Pot Society would love this one. Um, purple overglaze and then under underglaze is a little bit of a maroon color these would both make really nice this one would be a pretty nice little kusamuno pot here because it's on the larger side and this would be a good accent kusamuno so standalone pottery there and then this one could be a supporting character in a flowering or a little bit more feminine uh, bonsai composition Three pots. It's got it writ written on there actually. So it's three for one. I like how he wrote that on there because he knows knows that people that are really clumsy would go to unwrap this and drop it and they would all come apart. Alright, first one coming off the top. Very lovely little little uh, carved away kind of design with a blue ga blue glaze on top of a white stone body. Another nice little accent kusamono planter. And another one. Looks like it's very similar glaze, but this time around, actually looks like kind of like a Shino glaze underneath uh, with a blue 
They're very nice blue. These are all Japanese style glazes on these pots. I like this one here a lot because it's got those grips right there on that foot. Very nice little touch of detail there. Glazes on pots can give you some really interesting effects. Like this one has a really, really nice effect on it. Just spin that one around because that one's very nice. Lift it and spin it. I can upside down. You see the way the glaze interacted with each other there, and you almost use them like a like a smearing kind of stop lifestyle with the glazing there. Now I always choose containers from Chuck that have a nice tall foot, plenty of clearance and lots of drainage, especially for Cusimono, which you're supposed to not really repot nearly as much as you do your bonsai. So we'll make sure that we have a high capacity for drainage. This is a really highly, highly textured, highly textured carved pot. Chuck will do a pot like this every once in a while. And I rarely get to see one, but this one's actually pretty cool because it's so big. Cellophane on it. It's thick. All right, I'll get this out of here. Very beautiful. A little chunky. There's some chunkiness to the glaze here. This is not dirty, it's just the way the glaze looks. It's kind of bubbled up looking. Yellow pots are not very common. This is a very beautiful yellow matte glaze. Another Kusamuno. And this pot is very unique. Makes me think of sci-fi movie almost. It's got a really high foot. The foot comes out very blob-like, like little knobs. Stands up, has a nice height. And then as you spin it, you can see it has like a spiral to it, the way that this, this carve, this carving job comes out on it. Very, very cool. Very interesting design. Uh, this could be your typical Kusamono, or I would even say if you had some Literati or Bunjin style tree that would fit this pot, I think with the right tree and the right design, this could really, really stand out. This would be a really cool pot. Next. Feels like there is just a two in here. So yeah, this this pot here, it looks like he used a kind of a roller to roll on the texture. And then he put a really light glaze over this so that the texture shows just through, just barely. So you see swirly leaves and uh, and little various other designs, kind of like almost a Victorian kind of design here. And it's on a very, very light clay body. So just to kind of tell y'all show y'all what I mean by light clay bodies. This is a stoneware body. It's chunky, it's got a lot of grog, and a lot of speckling in it. Whereas this is uh, almost like a porcelain ware. In fact, I think this is porcelain ware. Very creamy, white, and actually very smooth as compared to this chunkier clay body here. And the glazing, especially when you're trying to do light, light details like this, on a pot, using a lighter clay body goes a long ways and shows the, the glaze off much differently than you would think. All right. Another one done in kind of the same style where it's got a floral design on the outside. And then the clay body this time is a more of a regular stoneware clay body with not so much grog and speckling in it. Um, with the feet on there is one, two, three, four, five, six feet all the way around. Uh, this is a larger Kusamono pot for sure. Um, I wouldn't use this as an accenting piece to a bonsai. This is for big wild grass or for, um, well, we have uh, prairie grass here, blue-eyed grass, prairie grass that would look really awesome in this because it would fountain out really big. And they have little blue flowers all over that would that would contrast very very beautifully with this 
this kind of, uh, it's almost like a burnt sienna glaze. Very pretty pot. The pots are getting bigger, but then at the same time, some of the small pots are coming out from inside of the bigger ones. Hmm. There's two pots in this. I think we ordered somewhere around, what, 17 pots or so? 21? Oh, wow. Never mind. More than I thought. Definitely another little pot shoved in this one. Oh, that's really nice. And Chuck's been doing something recently with some of his pots that he hasn't put like a, a foot on the bottom. So this, this pot would have to be put on a surface where there's slits underneath on the wood or on the bench that you put it on so that the drainage will go through. Or maybe even more of a water loving, uh, like a, uh, Jap like the Japanese horsetail grass would look would would perform really well in this. Something that doesn't like a lot of drainage. I could actually imagine that very easily, especially with this light, very beautiful, uh, another textural type glaze over this carved out piece. That's not carved either. It's more like a stamp hole, but it's it's seamless. You can't even tell where it begins and where it ends it. And then this one's very very dark. I don't know if it can, you can catch that stuff on camera there, but the, the way it almost looks like a cloudy, almost like a thunderstorm coming over, looming over. See what it makes me kind of think. Another beautiful pot. They're all beautiful. This looks like the same design. And when I say roller, it's because if you look at this one again, the same design that's a roller a ceramicist use this this little thing that literally looks like uh like when you're making cookies and you roll a design over a, over their clay except he rolled it on the edge but chuck is very skilled at making it look seamless and very very uniform and even another beautiful glaze over that design breaking through and when there looks like there's layers to it there's a blue and then there's this other glaze underneath that reddish tone that's that's a glaze on top of another glaze because of the pot Literally, the unglazed body looks like this. All right. Now it's time for not so many round pots. It's time for some bonsai containers. Two more smaller pots again inside of this bigger one. Do the little red one first. Red pots are also not very common. Red and yellows and pinks, purples. So bright pots like this, especially on this white foot, uh, white clay body, this porcelain ware, stand out very, very sharply against a tree with flowers. Or, or if you want to contrast this as an accenting pot with your bonsai, you want to choose a pot that's either unglazed or highly textured. So this would not be a great you know, example, but if your pot was textured and unglazed looking like this, and you had that next to it to kind of set it off, then you would have a, a decent looking composition with something like that. You want to make sure you're playing around with tones and colors. This is a really interesting glaze because it has a crackle in it where it looks like the glass almost shattered in, un underneath. The glass glaze actually shattered in sections. And there's these really awesome drips all over this pot. And they run down in between the feet. 
very, very, very intricate looking little design here. And this is all just glazing techniques. Whenever you've done pottery as long as Chuck has, pulling off a technique like this is very difficult and it looks like he's mastered it. I'd say that's probably my favorite glaze on a pot so far. And on to a bonsai container. It's a big oval with a, like a maroon undertone, brownish maroon, and then a blue and a blue glaze over that. Very similar to what we saw earlier on this pot, except for there's a stripe on this one as opposed to the more atmospheric look to this one. Turn it over. Nice. Nice short profile on the feet. So even like the little bitty, the most, the most like unnoticed, almost undetectable imperfection. I like, like these kind of pots when there's like a little drip of glaze. Cause when these are fired, they're in, they all share a tone together. And so this right here would be something that would stand out to me. And I would face that forward and make that on the front of the tree. Um, just like, People, trees have imperfections as well, or asymmetry is very, very, very uh, good to show that off. So I like, if this spot was kind of big, then that would be actually pretty awesome. Like the reason why I like this green pot earlier is that one section of it where it's splattered from another glaze. Very, very cool. And then our last... like there's two so there's a a really thin pot on the top here it's two pots okay this one here it's a landscape tray very shallow landscape tray it's probably about quarter inch to half inch deep, um, beautiful glazing, matte, the white kind of showing through, like almost like light clouds in the sky. And there are a little foot section, give you a little bit of tension. Very nice and flat. It's very hard for potters to achieve very flat bottom in their container so that, that water doesn't pool in one spot, that it actually evenly distributes and then goes to the grain holes or the plant gets access to it. Oh, I wish there would be some, not wish, but I would say drain holes or even tie down holes on the exterior to help with, with water that gathers on the, on the edges, but usually in a tray plant, I'm not too worried about that. And then the last pot, more or less the same kind of style of, of tray planting, but instead this one is an antique. Um, so this, this is an antique rub-on stain. So this is actually done just like this pot was. Uh, that's an antique rub-on glaze. So it's not unglazed. This is actually a mineral um, rub-on stain that is sort of like a glaze. And when he fires it, he might even be um, salt firing this. Because when you salt fire, it'll make an it'll make a stain, an unglazed pot, look like it has a little bit of sheen to it. Um, whenever I used to do ceramics in college, this was my favorite way to fire pottery was with salt glaze, uh, salt, um, a salt firing where they literally throw salt into the kiln while, while while it's firing the pottery, and the salt will actually give it that light kind of sheen to it. Or this might be an antique glaze, and they put he put it in an electric kiln and got a reduction firing on it. And this antique glaze particularly has a salt fire look to it. So um, there's a lot of things about pottery that I know, but there's a lot of things I don't know. So um, if Chuck sees this or, or if somebody else knows, just let me know how, how that's done if, if you have more information on that. But that's a very nice looking uh, textural uh, pop to that because of the, the way the glaze shines a little bit. But yeah, if I were to say out of the 21 pots we got here, I, would, I think my favorite one would be this one, and then my second favorite one would be this one, just because of the 
just because of the, I like atmospheric glazes with different little imperfections and the crackling in this is absolutely stunning. And then this one kind of has that same feeling, but me and, uh, me and Caitlin enjoy cookies and cream ice cream and it just makes me think of that. So it makes me happy when I think of look at, look at this top in particular. But thank you guys for watching. Um, we have a couple of other uh, opportunities. We're going to be stopping by Byron Myrick's house to go get some pottery from him in the future. And then we'll be making a trip to Florida and uh, we'll be showing off some interesting stuff that we get from there in the near, uh, in the near future. So thank you guys. Y'all have a great day. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Go to our YouTube channel and follow us and subscribe on there. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.